Hey guys, welcome to my final update for the top 20 books I wanted to read in 2021. Um, I think mid-year I had eight books on that list that I had not read yet. So there is a mid-year update, which I will link below. Um, as of now, and I'm filming this uh, a couple weeks before the end of the year, uh, December 18th. Um, there's only one book on the list that I haven't read, and I haven't read it because I didn't get it until like a couple days ago, and that is Vinland Saga Volume 12. I know it says Volume 23 on the list, but Volume 12 is actually the omnibus of Volume 23 and 24, and that book was supposed to release like September 2020, and then it got pushed to February 2021, and then it was like June, and then it was September, and then it was December, and I was actually skeptical that it was going to show up this year. Um, but it did finally show up just a couple days ago. So I may end up reading that by the end of the year, but I think the chances are pretty low. Um, we just get really busy during the last couple weeks of the year, and the Vinland Sagas are quite sizable manga volumes, although this one appears to be a little bit um, smaller than previous ones. Um, so that aside, I will go through the other seven that I did get through. Um, so I'll just stop, start at the top of the list over here and work my way down. Um, so the first one on the list there is These Violent, Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Um, I did read this. I really loved it. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. This is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in Shanghai in the 1920s, I believe. Kind of gangster Shanghai era when the, um, the European... European people are kind of migrating over and trying to take over parts of Shanghai. Um, to add to the interest, uh, there is a horrible monster buggy disease thing that is taking over people um, and making them mad. It's got a little bit of a Lovecraftian type of vibe to it. Um, I love this book. It is gory. It is gritty. But I really, and the two characters are not easy to like necessarily. They are part of gangster families that real Shanghai. Um, in this case, Roma is with the White Flowers and uh, Juliet is with the Scarlet, Scarlet Roses? No, I'm just forgetting. And their families are definitely at odds. And neither one of those characters are people you would want to mess with. But it was very delightful. It was fast. It is fascinating. It is nothing I could have predicted, and I really liked it. I actually just finished um, Our Violent Ends, which is the second and final book in the duology, and it was also very good. I didn't quite like it. Didn't like it quite as much as these Violent Delights, but they were both very good, and I would definitely recommend it if you're at all interested in like a historical fantasy set in Shanghai or Romeo and Juliet retelling. Just keep in mind. It can be gross and gory. It is a little creepy, and there's a lot of violence in there, so, but I did enjoy it. All right, the next one on the list that I read was Ravage the Dark by Tara Sim. Um, this is the second book in a duology by her, and I think, I should have written that down. Anyways, I think it's Revenge the Something. Anyways, this is a duology that is a retelling of the Count of Monte Crisco. Crisco. Christo, not Crisco, Christo, and it takes place in kind of a seafaring fantasy world, and in this case, the main character is a girl, not a man. Um, I liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. It was a good conclusion to the duology. Um, it's an entertaining story with lots of politics, lots of twists and turns. It's kind of like a lot of conf confidence schemes in the seafaring fantasy world. I think my only... Well, so I really like the flawed characters and how they work together, despite how humanly flawed they were. Um, I know, I think my only um, complaint was it felt like it ended a little abruptly. Uh, but other than that, very good duology. I'm a big fan of Tara Sandman. I didn't like this much of, as the Clock Keeper or the Clock Tower or whatever her first steampunk series was, but it still was very solid and I enjoyed it. So we get to Vinland Saga Volume 12. I already explained that. I just got it. I will try to read it by the year, but I'm not sure I'll have time. Um, the fourth one here uh, that I did finish reading is Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. Uh, this is the second book in the Dreamer trilogy, and I gave it five all five stars. I think Stiefvater is an amazing writer. She's got a beautiful, unique writing wow. style, very creative cool. ideas. And I apologize for that. My son is playing video games and yelling in the background. 
Um, something must have happened. Anyways, um, love it. Mady Stafeder is creative, so this book has just amazing ideas. It's beautifully complex characters, uh, just amazingly written, written, great plot, very, very intriguing. And I loved the first book. I loved the second book. I would highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of her writing style. Um, yeah, really good. So that takes us to Grace and Glory by Jennifer Armentrout, which is the third book in the Harbinger trilogy. Um, it was not a good year for me and Armentrout. Uh, I know I mentioned in my mid-year review that I had read her third book in her fa ongoing fantasy series and hated it. I didn't finish it. I stopped it and was very angry about how it was. <laughs> and I would say the same was pretty much true for Grace and Gloria. It actually took me so long to read Grace and Gloria because I was so disappointed in her third book in her fantasy series. And um, this is an urban fantasy young adult series about gargoyles and this woman who has this power and like up an angel or something. This finale for it was awful. It was a lot of the main woman and the main man saying, I love you. No, I love you. More. No, I love you more. No, I love you more. And it was just nauseating. And then on top of that, there's like this pregnancy scare that happens, which a lot of the book is spent on, but then it kind of just comes to nothing. And you're like, seriously, did you have to put so much page base towards that? And there's a huge battle at the end, but it doesn't end for me because if anything, anybody does significant, like God decides it will end or something like that. It's both thing is very odd. And I, I did finish it, um, but I hated it. I was so mad by the end of that book. I kept thinking it'll get better, but it never did. And in addition to all this, I don't know what's going on with her, but this was one of the most poorly edited books I read this year. Um, there was punctuation where there shouldn't be punctuation. Things were misspelled. Uh, it was it was just really bad. I mean, technically, it was a very poorly written and edited book, and the content was not worth it at all. I mean, if you're a big fan of the Harbinger series, I love the first book. I gave five out of five stars. I didn't like the second book as much. And this one, two out of five stars. I did not like it. I hated it. And so I guess with that, me and Harbinger, or me and Harbinger, we're definitely parting ways with that series. But me and Jennifer Armstrong are officially having a breakup. I am I'm not reading any more books by her after this year. I have never been so thoroughly disappointed by an author in such a short time period. All right, so that goes on to another Into a Duology that I read on the next one, and that is The Hollow Heart by Marie Bukowski. Um, This I have four or five stars. It is absolutely beautifully written. It's a very touching fantasy story. It's got a lot of themes of family and friendship and finding your love and your way in life. Um, I really loved it. Uh, I think Wachowski has a beautiful writing style. She does a great job creating very full, filling fantasy worlds and complex characters. Really enjoyed it. My only complaint, the reason I gave four or five stars, is it just ended really abruptly. Like, I think all the main points were tied up, but it just felt like, oh, we're done. And you're kind of sitting there like, what happened? Um, so there's that. Now we'll go on to a couple that I actually really enjoyed because I feel like I'm just dissing everything on here. Um, so you go down to the, let's see, one, two, three. Seventh book on the list is The One and Only Crystal Druid, which is the first bo book in the new Guild Codex Veiled series by Annette Marie. I'm a huge Annette Marie fan. You can feel how you want about that. I do understand her novels are basically guilty pleasure, urban fantasy reads, but I love them. They're always full of amazing action. The plot is fast. The characters are fun. The magic is very entertaining. And I like all the different races of creatures that are in there. And the one and only Christopher Drew featured Zach. And I I love him as a character. And I am was just excited to start reading a series about him. And it didn't disappoint. I love this book. I thought it was great. I love learning more about Zach. I like the new inter characters that are introduced. The new part of the you know, world that she has built that we get to see. So loved it. And then the last one on the list is When Sorrows Come by Shauna McGuire. And this is, actually I didn't write down which one, but I think it's like the 14th book in the October Day series, maybe the 13th. I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look and update it. Um, I give this five out of five stars. This is another urban fantasy world that I love. Um, I pretty much think, I was going to say I think Shauna McGuire can do no wrong, but her Encrypted series has gotten a little weird lately and I haven't been a huge fan. But... October Day series is going great. If you enjoy the characters in that series, um, they're all here. They're all great. 
I loved how the story developed and how a lot of the characters came together. This is the one where Toby and um, Tybalt finally get married. So, you know, a lot of stuff happens <laughs> around that to try to prevent them from getting married. Not actively, but just, you know, it's kind of a mess. So, again, lots of action, really cool magic and urban fantasy involving the fate, you know, kind of fae mythology and um, very well done. Uh, if you haven't started the October Day series and you are an urban fantasy series, fan I would really recommend it I will say the first couple books were rougher um I think I gave them four out of five stars they're very clear but they're a little more rough around the edges they are her debut novels so but as she kind of gets into her stride she really improved as a writer as she went on and I think it's a really solid series so those are what I have to say about the eight books that I had not read as of my mid-year update um, I did enjoy most of them. Again, Armentrout is really the only one that I had very negative <laughs> feelings to. Um, Grace and Glory, I, I really didn't like it. Uh, but the rest of them I pretty much really enjoyed. And so it was a pretty good, good year for me. Um, I will be putting together a top 20 books I want to read in 2022. And that will probably post sometime in January. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. Um, other than that. I'm going to go ahead and just tie this up. I hope that you guys had a have a great week of reading ahead of you. And I will talk to you for a second in the shelves on Saturday. Have a great week. Bye.